this is redstone. Wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. This is redstone. And today we are going to break it down into the most essential things you need to know as a beginner. Redstone is one of the most powerful mechanics in Minecraft. It can be overwhelming at first, but in this video I've put together the key information to get you started so you can start experimenting and discover how awesome it is for yourself. Each section could be a video on its own, but I'll keep it simple and focus on the most important information. And I'm planning to make this a series, increasing on difficulty as we go. If what I show you today is too easy for you, then tune in for part 2 where I start showing some more complex stuff. Or check out my other videos and maybe you will find something more challenging there. Redstone can be obtained in multiple ways. Either from redstone ore, which can spawn from Y level minus 64 to Y level 15, as the stone or deep slate variant. It gets more common the deeper you go, especially below Y level minus 32. To mine it, you will need at least an iron pickaxe, and each block drops 4 to 5 redstone dusts. With Fortune 3, the average increases to 6 items per ore. Alternative ways to get redstone are From villager trading, clerics sell redstone dust for emeralds. As loot chests in abandoned mineshafts, trial chambers and other structures. Or from witch farms, witches drop redstone along with other useful materials. Redstone has many uses, from brewing potions to trimming armor, but what we're focusing on today is its ability to transmit signals to power redstone components or creating different redstone circuits. Redstone dust can be placed on most blocks, but of course there are exceptions like chests, leaves, fences, walls or water. It powers the block that it's placed on, but again with some exceptions like glass, glowstone, top half slabs or upside down stairs. When we break the block that the dust is on, it breaks as well because redstone cannot be suspended in the air. When placed, it connects to adjacent redstone. This means that while there are other ways to run parallel wiring, we cannot use redstone dust to transmit two individual signals when the wires are next to each other. Redstone signal has a strength between 1 and 15. The further it travels from a power source, the weaker it gets, until it stops entirely. We can use a redstone component called repeater to, well, repeat the signal. Repeaters reset any signal strength of 1 or higher that they receive from the back, back to 15. So if you want the signal to reach further than 15 blocks from the power source, you are going to need to use repeaters. They also add a delay to the signal. Repeaters have four positions, each making the delay longer. Even on the first position, each repeater adds one tick delay, but more on that in the future. Redstone components are blocks used to build redstone circuits, farms or redstone contraptions. There are many items in the game that could be considered redstone components, but today I will only briefly mention the main ones and their main function and use. To use redstone, you need a power source. These include Levers Can be toggled on and off for consistent signal Buttons Emit a short pulse, the length is different for wooden and stone button. Redstone torch Provides a constant power source. It turns off when the block that it's placed on is powered by another source. Redstone block Also provides a constant power source. 
and can be moved by pistons. Pressure plates activate when stepped on. There are four types of pressure plates, all with slightly different functions. For today, we will only talk about the stone and wooden types. Both are triggered when either player or mobs walk over them. They emit signal until the player is on them and stop shortly after he steps off. Unlike stone pressure plates, wooden plates also detect dropped items. Tripwires consist of a wire that spans between two tripwire hooks and can be set up to be up to 40 blocks long. It is triggered when a player, mobs or an item crosses it. Before I continue with the video, I want to make a quick announcement. I have launched YouTube memberships. If you are interested in supporting the channel in this way, there are some great perks available that will continue to grow and evolve over time. I truly appreciate all your support, so don't feel any pressure to join. If you do join, please keep in mind that this is still under development and some things may change. You can find more details in the description below. Thank you and back to the video. Other key components and their uses are Pistons There are two types, regular and sticky pistons. Both can push up to 12 blocks in any direction. Sticky pistons can also pull or retract blocks back. Observer detects block updates of the block in front of its face. And when it detects one, it sends a quick pulse from the back. There are many things that count as a block update, such as plants growing, redstone components being powered, blocks being placed or destroyed, player pressing a node block, ice melting, and much, much more. Observers can be also pushed by pistons, which is very often utilized in circuits. I will definitely talk about them more in the future. Redstone lamp lights up when powered, it can be used for decoration or as a powerful component in circuits. Comparator measures signal strength and can read inventory contents. Comparators are so useful and complex that they definitely deserve a separate video. Node block plays sounds when powered or clicked by player. The sounds that it makes can be changed by placing it on different blocks. <laughs> Dispensers and droppers Both eject items when powered but dispensers interact with some items differently. They can fire arrows, use buckets, shear sheep, ignite portals with flint and steel or fire charges, Eject minecarts on rails. Bone meal plants. And much, much more. Hoppers. Move items between containers. They can pull items from the container above and push them into another container in which they are pointing. 
either down or to the sides. When hopper is powered with redstone, it locks and stops moving items around. This video was just a brief introduction to the world of redstone. There's so much more to explore, from automatic farms to flying machines. If you are ready to take the next step, check out my other redstone tutorials on the channel. If you found this helpful, leave a like, subscribe and let me know in the comments what you would like to see in part 2. Thank you for watching and take care.